Hi, my name is Sarah Davison and welcome to the Breakup Clinic Show. Now, I'm best known as the Divorce Coach and I specialise in helping you through any kind of breakup. So whether it's your first heartbreak, maybe you're going through a really tough divorce right now, maybe this came completely out of the blue and it's left you reeling. Now, whatever it is, I am here to answer your questions. So I'm gonna go through some of the emails I've received today. I've got one in particular I want to tell you about, and then I'm gonna give you the answers live on air about how you can start to take your control back and really turn your life around, okay? Now I know this is a really challenging time for a lot of you. I know it's tough, but the advice and top tips I'm gonna share with you, I've been sharing with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people around the world, and they really, really work. Okay, I've got two best-selling books out. I've got, uh, I've got experience on TV, I write columns. This is what I do. I eat, sleep, live and breathe this stuff and I'm here for you. So if you have any questions, make sure that you do email me, sarah at saradavison.com. Put in the subject heading Sarah TV and then put your question in and I will answer it the best I can. Obviously, the more information you give me, the best help I can give you, okay? I really wanna know as much as you feel comfortable sharing. Now, as you'll see, I don't share names, it'll all be anonymous. So whatever you send to me, I will change your name on camera, like I'm gonna do today. So today, we have a lady called Jane, who is 48. She has been married for over 10 years. She has two young kids. Now, Jane came home to find her husband with somebody else. Uh, she actually ended up walking into the bedroom. It was really difficult for her. Luckily, the kids weren't at home or weren't with her at the time. Now, her husband has apologised, but he has also said that he's leaving. Um, he's really sorry she had to find out this way, but he is not coming back. He's actually moved out and straight into a house with somebody else. Now, this happened about four or five months ago. So Jane is a little bit further down the line than I know some of you are right now today. So the advice I'm gonna give you at this stage, Jane, and thank you so much for sharing your story with us. You know, I know how difficult that can be. You know, I know there's lots of viewers who have also been through really difficult times when your partners have cheated on you. And I know that that causes so much heartbreak. But not only that, it also causes issues of self-esteem, self-confidence, lack of trust of your own instinct as well. Now, this came as a total shock to Jane. I know for others of you, you may have seen signs, you may have seen it coming. But for Jane, it completely hit her like a freight train. Uh, and actually walking in on them too has another layer of difficulty for her, which, which I know can be very, very traumatic. You know, breakups are actually known as the second most traumatic life experience we go through after death of a loved one. So don't underestimate the impact that this can have on your life. And I know those of us that have been through it or maybe if you're going through it right now, like Jane, you know how much it has a ripple effect across your whole world. So it's not just the relationship. Obviously for Jane, she has two kids, so she's got to manage those kids through this. Now her kids are three and four, so they're very young. Although they will pick up on emotions and feelings and energies around them right now. So it's important that you bear that in mind as well. It's another layer, which is specific to Jane. Now, if any of you are going through it, maybe you've got older kids. You know, again, that comes with different tips and different strategies. So right now, what we're looking at, Jane, for you, is that we really need to take some time. Now, I know you've said from your email that you've worked through a lot of the shock, uh, which is the first stage, just the, the denial, stuffing those emotions down, pretending it's not happening. I know at the moment you're feeling really, really low and you're struggling to get out of bed. And that's where having young kids actually can be relatively helpful in a way, because if you don't get up and, and get them ready, then no, no one else is going to. So it's important that you, know, you use that as a tool to help you motivate to get out of bed and do things. To be honest, when I went through mine, having my young son there was actually the only thing that would get me out of bed. So, you know, sometimes having young kids around at that time can actually help you get out of bed and put one step in front of the other. But I understand Jane is doing that and I know you're trying super, super hard to hold it together around them, Jane. So well done on being able to function. But what we want to do is help you to dial down those negative emotions so they're not controlling you all the time. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, I know, Jane, one of the big issues for you was that your husband's stuff is all over the house and it's a constant reminder. So practical thing to do, first of all, is clear his stuff away, okay? I don't advocate chopping it up, burning it, screwing it, chucking, up the, chucking it out the window. I had a client that did that the other day. The repercussions for her weren't great. You know, I know doing something in the moment like that can feel really good, but it's not the right thing. And I'm a big 
big advocate for any of you who know me and know my work, of always do the right thing. That's rarely the easy thing. I know it's rarely the easy thing, but it's the right thing to do. So I would just clear out all his stuff, okay? I would put it in bin bags, I would put it in or suitcases, I would just put it, take it out of your wardrobe, rearrange your home space. You know, clear up some new space for you, okay? It's almost like a spring clean. It's a great time of year for that. So clear out all his stuff, clear out every sign of him, give it a good spring clean, get rid of the smells, get rid of everything, and then put that out of sight. Even, you know, you can ask him to come and collect it or leave it somewhere at a friend's house for him to go and collect. If you don't want to see him right now, I understand that. But you want to get it out of your space so it's not a constant reminder of what you're going through, okay, and of him. Okay, then I want you to revamp your wardrobe, you know, move things around, put things, use the space. You know, us women, we like a lot of space for, for wardrobe, so use that space and claim that as your own. Okay, that's the first step. Step number two, if you're still having to live in the marital home, guys, which is Jane's really big issue right now. I know you've got a good support team around you, Jane. I know you've got some legal support there as well. I want to help you with living in the same house. I know that's a big concern. So I would suggest changing the layout of your house a little bit. For example, Jane says she's got this long sofa made up of three different bits that she lies on and he used to lie next to her and it really upsets her. What I would do is just split that sofa up, make it into like an armchair and then a long bench. It may not look perfect, but it'll feel different and that's the most important thing. You can put on different colour cushions, maybe introduce your favourite colour into your home. Change things up. You know, I know my ex used to have a chair, used to sit, sit in and then I gave that back and then I rearranged that whole side of the room. So I made it something totally different. I made it a play area for my son. So, you know, that gave it a different feeling and that's what we're looking for. Now, I know these sound like small things, but that's, that's it, guys, and that's the key. It's small steps. Small steps over a, period time, over a period of time actually add up to a huge leap forward and actually relatively not that, for, not, not that long a time. It could be even a week or two weeks, maybe a month. So what you're looking at doing is small steps and then stacking these together. So changing the layout of the house. What I did as well, which I find <laughs> some of you are gonna love, but I moved the pots and the plates and I swapped them over in cupboards. I didn't want my ex to know where things were. I changed my bed around in the room. I changed, I changed the bed sheets. Yeah, I got rid of all my underwear and bought new stuff. You know, I know that's not always possible, guys, but just try and revamp things, change things, move things you'll be surprised how much difference that makes, even if you change one rug for another rug in a different room. Take the photos down, re put up new photos. Now I know if you've got kids, sometimes that can be difficult. So just do it slowly over a period of time. Take some photos. Now, I'm a big believer of taking photos of happy times that you're experiencing now. Now maybe there aren't that many of them, but if you've got young kids, you're gonna be taking them places, you're gonna to have to do things with them. So maybe at the park, take a few snaps. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't look perfect in the photos, guys. It's about capturing those moments when you're smiling, you're laughing, you're getting a cuddle or a kiss from your kids or with friends. And change the photos bit by bit so it's not such a massive shock maybe for kids if they're going to notice that. But at three and four, they probably won't. And you can have some fun making those photo frames together. So change things up. Create an environment where everywhere you look, it means something nice to you. Anything that gives you that difficult, ooh, that feeling of, oh, this is hard, you take away. So I know that was Jane's biggest issue, of being in the house and being around that. Obviously, you know, creating that compelling future is something that's important and doing things that make you happy at a time like this are super, super important. It's time to give back to you so that you can start to remember who you are as an individual. Now, I had another question I'm gonna answer on my next TV show where I'm gonna talk about how you can start to boost your confidence and get back in touch with the real you. So rediscovering your own identity. I had a question in from Maria and I'm going to answer that on the next show. So keep watching. If you like it, please subscribe and like underneath and drop me any comments. I will be answering. All right. Lots of love. Have a great day.